Hi everyone, it's Melanie again. This is the next stitch for us is going to be Ocean Breeze. I really love the way that this stitch works out. Um, I've got this here in two colors and I was alternating every three rows, which I would probably do different this next time. But it's a very easy stitch. So I'm gonna jump right in and start teaching you. So we've got 30 DC across the bottom and then it's um, 18 rows high. Really excited to share this with you guys. Um, I'm using my Karen one pound um, yarn. It's a medium weight. The suggested hook size for this is um, a 5mm, but I'm using a 3.5 hook on this in order to keep our gauge right for the rest of our squares. Um, like I said, it's not important that you, or I just want you guys to know that it's not important that you use the same size hook as me. Um, if you haven't been doing that so far. So just go ahead and um, use the same hook that you used for the V-stitch. Um, so I went ahead and started off our sample so that you didn't have to watch me chain and count. So I did our starting foundation chain of 32 and then I double crocheted into the, f the fourth back loop from the, the, the needle from the hook, sorry, and did a double crochet. So this counting as our first and then going down and I did 29 and I'll just finish off now with our 30th double crochet. So if you wanna go ahead and do that or pause and do that and then come back, that would be a great time to do. So this is the first row. So we've got 30 in here. I've already gone back and counted but always make sure you count that foundation row. Now I'm gonna show you how to do the cha uh, chainless starting double crochet. If you're uncomfortable with doing this, you can just chain three and ignore uh, what I'm doing. I just like the way that this makes the edges look better. Um, so I'll show you twice. Um, go ahead and pull this up to the height of a double crochet. Wrap it around your hook, go into the bottom, pull through once, pull through twice, pull through twice. Okay, and as you can see, that really looks very similar to um, what a double crochet would look like. And I'll show you one more time. If you're struggling with this, um, there is a very good tutorial by the Moogly blog that I would recommend going to. So you go ahead and pull that up to the same height as a double crochet, wrap it around, make sure you're holding that with your finger, put it into the base part right there. Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, and there you have it. Now, as our s pattern says, we're gonna put three DC in this next space. So three double crochet in that first space coming right off the bat. And then we're gonna chain three. One, two, three. And then we're gonna skip two of these spaces here and go into the third and chain another three DC. One, two, three. Sorry about that noise, my cat decided to jump on my light. Okay, then we're gonna do another three. One, two, three. Skip, oops, skip two spaces and go into the third and do three DCs. One, two, three. And we're gonna continue this repetition until we've gone all the way across. And that will give us 10 clusters of three double crochets. So the way that I found this um, stitch was I, you know, I, I saw a picture of it on Pinterest and I really liked the way it looked. It was a picture and a chart. So I followed the Pinterest link and it took me to a Portuguese website. And then I noticed that the picture had a watermark on it. So I went to that website and it took me to uh, what I believe is a Greek page. And there was a tutorial there with the pattern diagram. Um, and I will include the link to that in the description to give the creator credit. Um, and I'm just kind of helping you guys bring this in English. I think Ocean Breeze, Ocean Waves is a beautiful name for the stitch. I was having a hard time finding it because I had no idea what it would be called. So 
So we're just continuing this pattern. My yarn is cut up. Skip two, double crochet. So I really love to find patterns on Pinterest, um, but as that story shows, sometimes it's not so easy as just following a link, but I'm very happy that I found this. All right, we're almost to the end here. So as you can see, it's kind of making like a bump and making it very loose, but that's okay. That's what's gonna create our waves. All right, then I'm gonna go in the skip two and I'm going into that second to last space with our three. And then a normal double crochet into the top of our turning chain. Okay, let's just go back and count, make sure everything's working out right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Great, so we want to have those ten clusters of the three double crochets with the chaining of three in the middle. Okay, so, oops, oh man, I just pulled out some of my stitches on my sample. All right, so now we're gonna go up to the third row and start doing um, the actual waves. Okay, just wanna remind you what our goal is there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that chainless starting double crochet again. So I pull it up to the height of a double crochet, wrap it around, put it in the spot, yarn pull through once, yarn pull through twice, yarn pull through twice. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is a three front post double crochets all in to this last farthest stitch from the row below. So I'll show you which I, what I mean by that. So we're gonna yarn over and then we're gonna put our hook all the way around like the entire stitch or the entire post of it, similar to what we did in the post stitch pattern. So we're gonna do one double crochet and then we're gonna go ahead and do the next two double crochet in that same spot. So just make sure that that yarn doesn't get caught up anywhere and it's staying low so your pieces stay tight. Sorry. I'm having a fight with my cat over here and my yarn. Okay. All right, so we've just got two of them around the post and we're gonna do this again. Oops. Okay, so I just wanna take a break and show you up close. So this is kind of like what would happen if it was a weird variation on the corner to corner. So we've got all three of these double crochet all going on top of that one double crochet from the row below. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and stitch three chains, one, two, three. And then we're gonna do that same thing around that farthest double crochet from the cluster below, one. two, and three. And I'll chain my three. So what you can see, kind of those waves are starting to form. Go ahead and do that again. So I'll show you just to make sure you're getting that. You're going around the entire stitch. One, two, three and then chain three and go back. So this is a pretty easy stitch to do. You want to make sure that each row you do is going to have 10 of these clusters. They do get kind of easy to skip because the stitch is not really linear like some of us may be used to, so you have to really pay attention to what's going on. So I've done five there. Two. 
two and three. So I'm just gonna do this back and forth with you two rows because hopefully it's pretty easy for you guys. Um, as always, if you have questions, just post them in the comment below. Also, please visit us on our Facebook page. It's just another crochet group. And that is where our written pattern is. Two, three. I love to see pictures of um, everybody's stitches and their color choices and their yarn and hook choices. Just using a different yarn and a different hook can size can make it look so much different and it's very fun to see all the different choices and results. I think this is one of those stitches that is a little bit hard to understand on paper, but pretty easy to pull together. All right, and now we're on our last cluster. So you're just gonna go make sure you get into that spot there around the double crochet of the, the farthest from the in the cluster. One, two, three. And then we're gonna end with a double crochet into the top of our turning stitch. Okay. So you can see it kind of start to make those waves. And um, I did find that the stitch doesn't really look like a square as you're going, but the farther up you get, the more it'll start to hold together like a square. So I'll go ahead and do one more row with you just because this will be our first time going on them once they're really starting to look crooked. So I'll do my chainless starting double crochet. Okay, and we go into that farthest DC from the cluster below. One problem I, I had was my yarn kept wanting to go above so you just make sure you pull that over so it doesn't get stuck up there. One, two, three. Then three chains, and then you go to the cluster. They do kind of want to hide behind, so just make sure you're using your back fingers to hold them out so you can tell what's going on. All right. Okay, then just do one, two, three. So it's a pretty easy stitch. You don't really have to count as you go. Everything's in threes once you get moving. Just make sure you always have 10 clusters per row. Not sure if you can hear my kids playing in the background, but that's them upstairs. One, two, three. Yarn over. So as you can see that it kind of starts to want to hide, but it's really just pulling close to each other because of where we're putting these stitches. Right, so I've got five there. I'll finish off these last five just so. Oops, all right. And then what I'm gonna wanna do, I'm gonna actually switch over to my completed swatch and show you the end. I had a little bit of trouble deciding on how to do the end because we wanna keep all of our squares to have 30 
30 spaces on the edge for our borders, right? So I did kind of have a hard time because I wanted to include um, the double crochets on the outside of this stitch to keep it standing. So that kind of made our stitch count go to 32. Um, so what you can see is once that starts to condense down and it starts to, um, you know, even itself back out, you're gonna start to get those pretty waves. So because it has 32 stitches going all the way across, if you're not counting those chains, you've got 32 because there's three bundles of 10. So 30 plus the two double crochet stitches on the side. So we're gonna have to drop three stitches, or two stitches, I'm sorry, in that last row in order to make it have 30 stitches on the outside for our border when we go to attach them. So you can kind of see they do, it's not really that square always when you're trying to figure it out. So just, you know, massage the stitches a little bit and make sure that you're seeing everything correctly. Okay, so there we see the first row, second row, and then the third row here. So I'm gonna go into the top of this churning crochet. two, three. All right, so there you can see row one, row two, row three is waving out on the back side, and then row four. So you're gonna continue with that pattern all the way up until the row 17 will be your last row like this, and I'll be back in just a second to show you how I did row 18. Okay, so here you see my finished through row 17 square. As you go, it will start to be more of a square shape. Um, and I'm just gonna show you how I got this top row to have 30 stitches for our border. Um, so if you're making a blanket or something bigger, you probably wouldn't have to worry because you're not gonna be putting a border on if you're not putting a border on. But since we're putting a border on, I wanna make sure it has that 30 stitches, 30 double crochets on the top row. So I'm gonna do my turning chain with the chainless standing double crochet. Oops, pulled too far. All right, and then I'm gonna do a double crochet into the next spot, just to make sure that that is staying nice and close. And then I'm just gonna skip one of these in the cluster because I've gotta skip two stitches all the way across, so I'm gonna skip them on this outside row. So I'll skip one here. So we've got three double crochets for that top cluster. And then what we're gonna do is just skip over the chain and don't do anything there. So just cro double crochet into the first, the, the closest from that patch down below, just skipping over the chain. And then all nine of your, or all your eight middle clusters here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, will all receive the three double crochets per each cluster. I'm just skipping them in those outer clusters in order to keep that 30, which is kind of hard to explain, but I'm sure in a few months when I go to put all these together, I will be happy that <laughs> I did that. So each of these clusters across is going to get three and we just skip over those three chains. And this is gonna help pull our swatch closer together. So when I was making this original sample for you guys, I was changing every three rows because I didn't realize how much the rows would condense and that the ripples would just be on one side. So if I were you, I would not do that because you can see it kind of, I don't know. These ones, you can only really see one wave in that color. So if I were to do it again, I would probably figure out something different, but I am pretty happy with how this came out. Um. All right, my 
my baby Michael is starting to get a little bit fussy, but he should be good. I don't know if you guys can hear him. He's trying to eat his toy. Perfectly safe. I can see him. I had an, a comment asking for me to show him in my videos, but unfortunately, if you show minors in videos, it changes the rules on YouTube, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep the minors out of it. <laughs> A lot of people ask me how I hold my crochet hook. I don't really hold it like a pen or a knife. This is just the way that my great aunt taught me when I was eight. She was from Czechoslovakia back when there was such a place. We're in the Czech Republic now. And this is how she held hers. It's like a modified knife hold. Oh, and I got carried away talking. So in this last cluster, what I'm gonna do here is crochet into the first and then I'm going to skip one just because I want the outside border to be a little bit uh, more uniform. So I'm going to skip this spot here and then crochet in the last two spaces. Um, so that's how I, I wrote the pattern just so that when we go back to add the border and stitch all these squares together it's going to look nice. So that is our ocean waves square. I hope you guys like it. I think it's so pretty. Um, I think it would be a lot of fun in a, a textured, I think it would be a lot of fun in just one solid color or like an ombre yarn if you have that. Um, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this stitch as much as I have. Um, please check out the links in the description. I'll put a link to our Facebook group and I'll also put a link to the Greek page where I found um, the pattern originally. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I find that it works up really quick and pretty easy. If you have any questions, please comment down below. Give my video a like. You can subscribe so that you know when I'm posting videos for the future of our cow. And also leave any comments. And that just helps me know that you guys are watching, that you're appreciating things. Maybe if there's something you don't like, let me know that too. I'm open for it. And I hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you next week.